family as part of the Macy's family. The Karen News and the Rodney's have helped Macy's stay connected with both the New York Caribbean community and the global community at large. The Karen News has been an important partner on key initiatives like the Rwanda and the Mali Peace Basket Program, to name but a few. The Karen News worked with the Africa Travel Association to promote the project, did stories, and helped with marketing, and was a drum for the wonderful program here at Macy's. Macy's, too, has also been a strong supporter over the years of the Carib News Multinational Business Conference in the Caribbean and Latin America. Again, a very long-standing partnership. So throughout the geographic spectrum, the Carib News and Macy's have enjoyed a warm, productive, and effective partnership throughout the years. This relationship has run very deep for many years. With, with Macy's retired senior vice president, Ed Goldberg, with our very own SVP, Bill Harthorne, who's here tonight. <laughs> the Carib News has also been a wonderful marketing partner and has worked closely with our marketing department with people like Tamara Weston. And Tamara Weston's in the house. <laughs> <laughs> We have our, our very own Bernice Clark here, who is our Senior Vice President of Marketing. Woo! Who is part of the Power 100. Congratulations, yes, Senior Bernice. But on a very personal note, I've known the Rodneys for a very long time myself. In fact, I've known them from the days of NNPA. And in full disclosure, my husband is also a publisher. So I understand all the, all the trials and tribulations of the black press, and I just want to congratulate you for being able to navigate in, the, in that space. I know it's very competitive, and you guys have done a wonderful job, and your leadership with NNPA has been phenomenal. Yes. So congratulations. Yes. Yes. So again, I would just... I wanted to be brief, and I just wanted to say um, thank you for the wonderful partnership. Um, I also want to thank you for your support of Macy's over the years. Um, Faye calls me all the time talking about how she can help Macy's and how she can help us increase our sales, and I love that. <laughs> I love the fact that she supports those, and Carol supports those that support them, and Macy's believes the same. So thank you again for that. So again, I would like to thank the Carib News and the Rodney's personally for the wonderful partnership with Macy's. And congratulations again on 35 years. That's quite an accomplishment. And for the Power 100, that's wonderful. Congratulations. Okay, so I said I'd be brief, so without further ado, I would like to bring up Michelle Rodney, Dean of the School of Criminal Justice at Monroe College and the daughter of the Rodney's. everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, so we are going to convert Macy's into the Caribbean tonight. Right. So that means that I'm going to say good evening and then we're going to have a Caribbean good night. Good night. We've got to try that again. Good evening. Good night. Um, good evening is usually good evening. But, uh, pleasure to be here tonight and to serve as the mistress of ceremony again at the annual Caribbean Heritage Recognition Celebration with Macy's. And we thank you for the partnership of over 20 years and it's just really nice to be in um, the store when I'm not spending money, but you know, I'll do that later. We're open till 10. <laughs> so, um, Tonight has significance as the month of June is Caribbean Heritage Awareness Month. And for those that may not know, in June of 2005 is when the House of Representatives said, you know what, we need to acknowledge our Caribbean um, American history and the heritage. And then the Senate in 2006 of February. So it's significant. And certainly Carib News when it started 35 years ago, and it was in June actually of 1982. So the month means a lot to us um, in addition to the celebration of the heritage that was acknowledged officially by the national government. 
And it's also important because our role is to take our rightful place in the sun. And so we've done that and continue to do that in 35 years. And so it's, it, it's a joy for me to stand here and say, wow, we have certainly come a long way. And we're acknowledging our history and we're acknowledging the importance of it. So I want to welcome everybody this evening. And so for those who are from a particular island, island, we recognize you. If you are not from an island, we ask you to adopt an island tonight. <laughs> and you can, you can say you're from that island, if anything you know about the food, the culture. So this way we're going to share, um, we're going to share our, the wealth of our history. And truthfully, as my parents have always told me, that there is no difference in terms of um, you and I, and if it's Barbados or Jamaica or it's North Carolina or South Carolina, there is no differences, and that's what we have enjoyed over the years, a partnership for progress and power. And that partnership, <clears throat> please, and that partnership means a lot to us because it could be the NLACP, it could be the Urban League, it could be the NNPA, whoever we chose to partner with was because we all have a story that is valued and we need to tell, and we tell it together. And so with your, with your some continued support, we'll continue to tell our story and make sure that we operate as one. And so when we think about the Caribbean, Alexander Hamilton was from what island?
it's such an extraordinary opportunity for us to really be in one of the island nations, and this time it's, it's St. Croix, and really talk about how we can help our Caribbean sisters and brothers, how we can bring investments there. And you know, this is what Carl and Faye continue to do. That's right. And it's really to just lift our consciousness, ensure that we are aware of what's happening in our nations throughout the Caribbean, and to really, for me, as a person who was born, born here, it's kind of, I'm the elder in the family now, my brother and me. So I'm missing my Caribbean family, but you keep me connected to my roots. And I just, I'm so honored, you know, to be here tonight and just to be reminded, Patricia, of all that our ancestors endured coming across the seas over the centuries. And that we really are, as Tom Morley has said so eloquently, we are the survivors. We can never take that for granted. And there's so much struggling and suffering in our communities, and we have the responsibility. Able, stable, black people, and our allies. And Macy's has been an ally. I love how this institution that I grew up in, Ruth, there was nowhere else that my mother would shop. Grew up on 116th Street and Park Avenue. Needix used to be on the corner down there. I don't know if any of you remember that. <laughs> this is where we came to shop all the time, the only store. And to see how Macy's has supported news really brings joy to my heart because you know what we have to be conscious consumers right. and we have to spend our money in places that show that they respect us that they value us and they support the entities that are important to us so Macy's continues to have my so thank you so much for allowing me to say a few words Thank you so much. So I, we have some of our guests that have come. So I need to, to walk in, and we're going to have um, the former Congressman Rangel to join us. And I'm going to ask the guests that are out to come on in. Come on in. We've got some room. Come on in. Join us. Great, thank you. And so those who just arrived, just know you have to pick an island. You have to pick an island tonight. So, all right, so I'm going to ask Wallace Congressman Rangel to please give us a few words. Thank you. I thought I was sneaking in the back door. But it looks like a whole lot of people out there. And I just, I'm on the way to my oldest brother's 90th birthday, Dave Dinkins. He's been selling this, celebrating his birthday. This is the 10th out of morning. <laughs> but he talks badly about me when I'm not there, so I've got to protect my interests. But Colin Faye was so much, was so much an important part to my congressional career. And they introduced me to Michael Manley from Jamaica. All right. And my life had never, never been the same since. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well. And I was able to put together the Caribbean Basin Initiative, which is the first trade agreement we ever had with the Caribbean, as well as the first African trade bill. But it was so bad. You know, people forget the progress that we made and how far we got to go, and the economic progress that all of the islands really faced even today that we're not talking about the settlement. Uh, but the truth is, I remember the first trip so well when my bill was being having hearings in Barbados. We went to all the other islands, and Dan Roskikowski was the chairman. He said, Charlie, I'm really impressed with your people, and they, they speak English so well. <laughs> so, I knew I had a name because they had no idea about the history of the islands and where we were. So I'm going to join my brother and tell him what he missed. But I do hope that you understand that the days of the sand and sea, as far as the economic future of the islands, are over. And that we have to talk about something that's more stable. You see what's happening in Puerto Rico, the same thing is uh, spreading throughout the Caribbean. But Carl and Faye have been an anchor, and uh, Bess and those who write for this newspaper, I can tell you that all the resources that we've had 
with the Congressional uh, Research Office, no one did a better job than Herb News in informing us right. exactly <laughs> what's going on. Thank you so much, um, Congressman Rangel. And so but we have more guests that have come in from asking to join us. And so it's really interesting because when the paper started 35 years ago, it was the mission that sun and sea were not going to define the Caribbean. And they had to know that we had an economic power and a strength. So I think we have done that. I'm going to ask Assemblyman Nick Perry. So please come and give us some remarks. Good evening, good evening. It's kind of early to say good night. But once it gets dark in the islands, it's good night. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. So I was just checking if uh, Speaker Carl Heasley was here, and uh, he's not here, so as the uh, Assistant Speaker of the Assembly, I, I certainly uh, take the liberty to speak also uh, on his behalf, to welcome you all here, and uh, let you know that uh, as far as current news is concerned, we recognize the power of the media and the power of tariff news in the community that you speak to. You know that when you read tariff news, you unchain your mind. That's right. And uh, you begin to think like you should because of the knowledge you get from reading tariff news. And all the problems we have as a people is that we don't know enough about who we are and all of the terrible things we went through and the things that still exist as impediments in our way as we try to make our contributions to build this country. We have in the New York State Legislature over uh, about 34, 35 members uh, who are proud of their Caribbean ancestry. So this month, uh, Carl and Faith came up and joined us in Albany when we celebrated Caribbean heritage. The Speaker of the New York State Assembly boasts Caribbean heritage proudly. The Democratic leader in the New York State Senate and the future majority leader of the Senate uh, boasts Caribbean heritage. And by the way, uh, our history takes us takes her back to St. Kitts. <laughs> Carl, Jamaica and the Bahamas. As everyone know, I'm a proud Jamaican, Jamaican as proud as they come. So every year, Carl and Faye and I and my wife spend end the year in, in, in Jamaica. Uh, so I want to thank you for the opportunity and I I'm really pleased to join you as you celebrate uh, our heritage, and uh, please have a good evening. Okay, at this time I'm going to ask Deputy Mayor Buer to please join us. Richard Buer, please join us. A special presentation we have. Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. I uh, really want to bring greetings on behalf of Mayor Bill de Blavio and Charlene McRae, and I uh, really want to say thank you to Faye and Carl Rodney. Uh, join everyone in saying how much we are grateful for your leadership uh, to the Rodneys uh, and everything they've done to promote Caribbean heritage in New York City. Um, and really thank you on behalf of uh, everyone in New York City for all the work that this magazine has done and all the work uh, that we all do every day to keep New York City strong. Um, lots of New York City, just like the New York State Legislature, we have lots of New York City leaders who claim proud Caribbean heritage, starting with the First Lady of New York City, Charlene McRae, who is a proud Bayesian, uh, very proud Bayesian. I have a great honor to work with her on so many initiatives, including her work around mental health 
I saw Cecile Noel, uh, I'm the mayor of the Office of Combat, Combat Domestic Violence, uh, like my wife, a proud Jamaican, uh, Greg Bishop, who I saw as another honoree, uh, who leads our Department of Small Business Services. Um, so many uh, people in New York City government uh, come from the Caribbean community. Uh, and it's really a testament, you know, we were talking about Alexander Hamilton before, it's a testament of something that, you know, they say in that musical, you know, immigrants, we get the job done. We do get the job done. Immigrants like my parents, who are from Panama, they came over in the early 60s. Uh, my mother from Panama by way of St. Lucia, my dad's family originally from Barbados and Jamaica. And they moved over here in the 60s. You now I'm saying as many islands as I have background and you get as much love as I can. <laughs> um, same, same kids. They came over here. Yeah, same kids. Yeah, they're not from you know, old claims, same kids anyway. You know, they came here in the early 60s. They got married. They raised three children here. They built a life here. Uh, and that's really what New York City is about. Uh, it is about the immigrant experience. It's the immigrants who make us strong. Uh, and you know that right now, uh, we are living in a time when uh, the values that drive New York City, those immigrant values of inclusion and diversity and love are under attack. Uh, under attack, these things which are the source of our strength are being viewed as a sign of weakness. Um, we can't stand for that. Uh, too many in our community and other immigrant communities are afraid. They're afraid of being ripped apart from their family. They're afraid of being the victim of crime because of the God they worship or the language they speak or the color of their skin or their accents. Uh, and we have a president who wants to build walls and we should be in the business of building bridges. But what I want to say, we all know being in this room, we know that there is so much power and strength in this room, so much power and strength in this community. What I want to say is that in New York City, we are not going to stand for that. We are going to continue to fight. We're going to continue to fight for New York City values. We're going to continue to support immigrants. We're going to continue to celebrate the rich history of immigrants. We're going to continue to tell the truth about immigrants. That immigrants do not commit more crime than anybody else. In fact, immigrants are the most productive people in our society. We you know immigrants own most of the businesses in New York City are owned by immigrants. We are doctors and lawyers and teachers and laborers and students and lovers and parents and friends. And no matter what happens in D.C., we are going to stand for the city that we love, the city that we believe in. So I just want to again thank you uh, for keeping the spirit of Caribbean America and immigrant America alive and strong uh, and know that we have a friend and partner in City Hall. I have the pleasure to be with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Richard? Oh. Thank you. Bill? Bill? Well, we'd like to um, make a presentation to our Deputy Mayor, and it's the Caribbean American on the top one on the his face. And uh, it's really celebrating individuals who have made a, an impact and as, uh, in their own field of, of endeavor, and of course, have had an impact on the community also. So, congratulations and uh, all the best. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. What a pleasure it is to join everyone to celebrate this, I guess it's the 16th to 17th year of Caribbean American Heritage Month. And I'm going to take the liberty of bringing greetings, although I'm not a member anymore of the Congressional Black Caucus. As you know, Congresswoman Barbara Lee played a big role as the sponsor, the lead sponsor of the bill that created the month. 
Also, Claire Nelson, that we've worked with Claire for many years, and I'm proud to have been able to be there to support her as she began the effort that brought us to today. And uh, also the Caribbean American PAC in, from DC, who's also been working very hard at making sure that uh, though the bonds between the US and the Caribbean stay strong. But no one has done that better than Carl and Faye. For 35 years, they have not just in one month, not just for one day, but every day of the year, every year, have been living and making sure that we keep the knowledge and the awareness, the bonds between the U.S. and the Caribbean alive. And we're so proud to be able to be hosting the multinational business conferences here in St. Croix, my home. And I'm not going to take anything away from Nemus because <laughs> that man was, he was born there, he was raised there for the first nine or ten years of his life, and then his mother moved to St. Croix. Mm -hmm. And we tried to <laughs> In November, November 9th to the 12th in St. Croix. We are celebrating 100 years of being a part of the United States. So we're a part of bringing the heritage of both together as well. So join us as we celebrate our 100 years, 35 years of Carib News, 16 or 17 years of Caribbean American Heritage Month. And um, as we begin to really realize the promise of the U.S. Caribbean Engagement Act, that Congress passed and Barack Obama signed last year, which was an issue that we took from Panama and said, come, you know where a hell of high water that was gonna be passed before the president left the White House. Thank you. Thank you. And we have a Caribbean American Heritage Power 100 um, presentation to Donna, who's one of our armies. And um, it's our pleasure. Thank you. It's such a great partner. Yes. Three years. So whilst there are some pictures being taken, I'm going to um, acknowledge some of our guests who are here with us and. They are um, from certain islands, and so I'm going to first acknowledge um, that we have um, a power couple that works for the NYPD, and one is the chief, and the other is the captain, and that is Sam Wright and Linda Rock Wright. Can you please, and they are from, it's Barbados, correct? Yes, please come up, please be acknowledged. These two made very powerful decisions in the NYPD, and they are, they, it's Barbados that they're proud of, correct? Yes. All right, thank you, thank you. All right, and um, let me also acknowledge our de our commissioner from the Office of the Mayor to Combat Domestic Violence, Cecile Noel, from the island of Jamaica. Okay, we have um, Judge Alvin Yearwood from the island of Trinidad and Tobago, yes, Judge Yearwood? Yes. <laughs> Judge Sam Walker, Yay. the island of Jamaica, Yay. and Mrs. Walker, Pat Chin from VP Records, Jamaica, Sherman Brown from Aim High CEO from the U.S. Virgin Islands. <laughs> Judge Sweeting, Michelle Sweeting, yes, Jamaica, Bahamas, okay, I'm trying to get everybody from Jamaica, Dr. Millicent Cumbry, Jamaica, Miss Estelle Dupesant, Haiti, so we're going to keep bringing up other individuals to acknowledge, but now we have a presentation to do for Miss Bernice Clark from Sacred and Nevis. Amazing. And Bill is. Uh,